Georgia's Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis's team began their day in court at 8.27 a.m., filing a response to defendant Kenneth Chesbro's dismissal request. At 10.05 a.m., co-defendant Sidney Powell filed a motion to adopt defendant Chesbro's dismissal request. At 11.19 a.m., District Attorney Willis filed a response to defendant Powell's dismissal request. At 12.56 p.m., District Attorney Willis responded to another of defendant Chesbro's dismissal requests on First Amendment grounds. At 1.19 p.m., Co-defendant Rudolph Giuliani waived his right to a speedy trial. At 3.31 p.m., District Attorney Willis filed a motion for a protective order over discovery materials. At 4.15 p.m., co-defendant Mark Meadows adopted co-defendant Jeffrey Clark's motion to extend deadlines. And at 4.45 p.m., District Attorney Willis filed the prosecution's notices and reservation of rights pertaining to discovery. At 4.54 p.m., District Attorney Willis filed a response to co-defendant Chisbro's motion to dismiss RICO charges. And then at 5.30 p.m. today in Washington, D.C., federal judge Tanya Chutkin denied Donald Trump's request that she recuse herself from the case. Donald Trump's lawyers filed a motion requesting her recusal based on two statements that she made in court when sentencing two people convicted in the attack on the Capitol on January 6th. Those were two separate cases. In one case, Judge Chutkin said during the sentencing that the defendant showed, quote, a blind loyalty to one person who, by the way, remains free to this day. In another case, Judge Chutkin said to the convicted defendant, You have made a very good point, one that has been made before, that the people who exhorted you and encouraged you and rallied you to go and take action and to fight have not been charged. The Trump lawyer's filing said Judge Chutkin has, in connection with other cases, suggested that President Trump should be prosecuted and imprisoned. Such statements made before this case began and without due process are inherently disqualifying. In her written decision, refusing to recuse herself from the case, Judge Chutkin said, at the outset, it bears noting that the court has never taken the position the defense ascribes to it, that former President Trump should be prosecuted and imprisoned. And the defense does not cite any instance of the court ever uttering those words or anything similar. Instead, the defense interprets the court's verbal reiterations of defendant Palmer and Priola's arguments about their relative culpability as suggesting a secret core view about defendant's criminality. That inferential leap is not reasonable in light of the relevant facts, record, and law. Judge Chutkin said that those two comments at those two sentencings cannot be the basis for a recusal. She said, The Supreme Court has held that a judge's statements made in a judicial setting and reflecting opinions formed by the judge on the basis of facts introduced or events occurring in the course of the current proceedings or of prior proceedings do not constitute a basis or a basis or or partiality motion unless they display a deep-seated favoritism or antagonism that would make fair judgment impossible. That is because such statements often reflect information that the judge properly and necessarily acquired in the course of the proceedings and that was necessary to the completion of the judge's task. After all, if a court did not form judgments about the issues in a case, then it could never render decisions. Consequently, statements originating from such intrajudicial rather than extrajudicial sources require recusal only in the rarest circumstances. Judge Chutkin warned that recusal motions can be a weapon to delay proceedings. She wrote, Justice also demands that judges not recuse without cause. In the wrong hands, a disqualification motion is a procedural weapon to harass opponents and delay proceedings. If supported only by rumor, speculation, or innuendo, it is also a means to tarnish the reputation of federal judge. This court has, from the beginning, repeated its commitment to ensure the orderly administration of justice in this case as in any other case. 
That commitment echoes the court's solemn oath to administer justice without respect to persons, to do equal right to the poor and to the rich, and to faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all duties under the Constitution and laws of the United States. Based on its review of the law, facts, and record, the court concludes that a reasonable observer would not doubt its ability to uphold that promise in this case. For these reasons, defendant's motion for recusal of the district judge is hereby denied.